Over 200 years ago, in the year 1800, the world population was less than 1 billion. Now, in the year 2019, that number has grown past 7 billion people. Now, I would like everybody to imagine a life without being able to use your cars, your stove, or any other fossil fuel reliant energy resource or tool. This could possibly be our reality if our world population keeps growing past the number of our fossil fuel rate at which they can regenerate. My name is David Puente, and the topic at hand has brought my group members and I to the following question. What are the effects of the growing population, and what are the best solutions to mitigate them? In order to assess the full scope of the topic, my group members and I have divided it into three different effects. The economic effect, environmental, and my personal effect, which is societal. So the world population keeps on growing and places severe strains on worldwide economies. For example, according to the law of supply and demand, inflation raises, uh, prices and raises will keep uh, happening due to the fact that more and more people um, lose the value of their money. Also, housing prices will continue to increase as more and more people will look for a place to live, as well as the decrease in job availability since more people want to find the same occupations. And one of the other great effects is the depletion of our natural resources since fossil fuels take years and years to actually form. Therefore, since we use them at a much faster rate than they can regenerate, we end up not being able to use these at all. Another thing would have to be the deforestation occurring around the world. For example, the Brazilian Amazon rainforest has lost more than 20% of its land mass since the year 1970. So one of the biggest effects that the growing population actually has on society is the decrease in literacy rates across the world. For example, in many developing countries, the literacy rates keep um, going down because these people have a hard enough time already to educate all their citizens due to the fact that they have a very low economic uh, uh, standing right now. So for example, this graph right here shows the uh, Sub-Saharan African countries and their literacy rates. As you can see, Niger is the lowest one with 17% uh, of their 45 through 49 year olds actually only being literate. So for this reason, the growing population is posing severe threats on the literacy rates of the world. Furthermore, another effect would also have to be the increase in family sizes. For example, approximately every woman in Mali has about seven children on average. This is due to the fact that women keep looking for ways of getting more children so they can do more work around to pull them out of these uh, poverty situations. And it was found that, um, okay, the world population is projected to be around 9 billion in the year 2030. However, if women in Mali have as fewer as one less child, we can severely reduce that number in the future. Another very, very serious effect, which is also coincidentally a cause of the growing population, would have to be early child marriages. For example, India, which is one of the most populous countries in the world, actually has early child marriages as early as nine and six. This is because since they are in, a lot of people are in great poverty, uh, a lot of families tend to uh, marry off their daughters in order uh, to wealthier families in order to actually pull them out of this uh, poverty situation. So for this reason, uh, we have these increase in child marriages in India and many other developing countries across the world. Furthermore, an increase in child mortality rates is actually one of the biggest effects of the growing population. Many developing countries suffer from sanitation issues. For example, this uh, is the Ganges River in India. Uh, constantly cremated bodies are thrown in here. People come and bathe, both rich and poor. And overall pollution is thrown in here all the time. So because people have a lack of sanitation and healthcare centers, the child mortality rate only increases in these developing countries. So this, is, uh, this graphic actually shows some of the highest mortality rates in India where the darker areas representing the highest. As you can see, that's a large majority of the subcontinent. And another issue that arises is actually, um, again, the lack of healthcare centers, for example. This is one of the very few healthcare centers inside the, it's like one of the, uh, many Indian rural villages. People have to wait in lengthy lines just to receive the treatment they need. And because there's just so many people, as you can see, and these people, end up dying because they don't receive the treatment they need in time. Another, again, very severe effect of the growing population would have to be the gender disproportionality that occurs because, for example, cultures in China tend to value male figures over, or male children over females. This is due to the fact that women are seen as simply uh, being, having their role in life would be to get married, as opposed to males who actually carry on the family name. So for this reason, um, Chinese couples keep having babies until they reach their male figure. For this reason, China, for example, has 34 million more males than they do females, as opposed to the one-to-one -one ratio of the United States, 
In the U.S., uh, women actually compose of only 50.8% of the population as opposed to 49.2% of the male population. So it's fairly even, as you can see, as opposed to, for example, in China, where the disproportionality is through the roof. So one global organization working to help these effects is the United uh, Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, otherwise known as UNICEF. So UNICEF actually operates in over 190 different countries in order to ensure that every child has the right to an equal education, as well as um, educating healthcare workers to help kids who are suffering from uh, diseases, such as waterborne diseases that come from, again, like the Ganges River, for example. And UNICEF helps develop vaccines for these children so they don't die of easily curable diseases, such as measles. Now, the United Nations Population Fund is yet another organization with the same vision in mind as UNICEF. The UNFPA um, operates in over 150 different countries in order to ensure every woman has universal access to reproductive health care services. This is actually a picture of the UNFPA having uh, meetings with worldwide governmental leaders in order to help ensure people receive the treatment they can. A local organization known as Miami Beach Rising Above as well um, helps to mitigate these effects. Miami Beach Rising Above holds um, monthly conferences in which people are completely free to attend so they can learn the best ways to reduce their carbon footprint. For example, it helps to teach people how to, best ways to reduce, reuse, recycle, and hold monthly beach cleanups to make sure we can sustain our impact amongst the world as we are growing at such a rapid rate. Furthermore, Planned Parenthood of South Florida actually um, holds, um, again, inclusion groups for teenagers to come in with their families where here they can learn to, uh, about their best contraceptive methods and all their options possible. Women who um, are also pregnant can come in and talk about all their options as well in order to help sustain our global population. Now, for my innovative solution, I propose that we specifically um, target these countries with low, I mean, high infant mortality rates and the lowest contraceptive uses. By doing this, we can actually implement an educational system where we can go and help and teach children about um, the best contraceptive uh, methods, well, all their options really, as well as their um, how to reduce their carbon footprint and sustain their resources. This will be at no cost to them in order to ensure that financial barriers are not a hindrance to these kids and will be funded by non-governmental organizations and private owners much like UNICEF is funded. This way we can actually um, make sure that these kids know their, the best methods to sustain the population. Thank you so much for your attention. My name is Ed Quentin, that was my presentation.